I'm Kinslow from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can just call me Johnny K. I'm going to be rebuilding my 671 big block Chevy blower motor for my 1953 Chevy Pearl Street car. Figure I'll just put a little mini series together and uh, let you watch it. And if it helps you out, awesome. Just make sure that your harmonic balancer is top dead center. The pointer should read right at zero on a harmonic balancer. I run a MSD billet distributor that's been awesome for like 20 years. Here's the electrode. It should be pointing towards the front of the motor, passenger side, corner of the intake manifold, which is pretty much pointing towards number two cylinder. The electrode on the rotor, remember that gets pointed to number one on the distributor cap. Another thing I like to do is I like to label my cap, especially number one. But I go ahead and label where all my spark plug wires go, and then that way, no screwing up. Also, if you at least label number one, you can set the cap on. And if you notice, the caps have a little square notch and the cap can only go on one way. And so you uh, slip the cap on, line it up, see where number one's at, pull the cap off, and your electrode on your rotor should be pointing towards number one. If it is, you're good to go. Put grease on your distributor gear. Don't forget your distributor gasket. The distributor in, I kind of get it set up so when I drop that baby in, the rotor electrode pointing directly towards number two cylinder. What I do is I take a long straight blade screwdriver, I'll insert it into the slot of the oil pump, and I'll turn that shaft of the oil pump with the slot in it, I'll face that slot towards cylinder number five. Okay, that's the first step. Point the slot towards cylinder number five with a long handle screwdriver. Second step, coat your distributor gear with assembly grease. Third step, as you're putting in your distributor, the distributor gear is going to mesh with the cam gear. And as, as it goes in, you'll wiggle it a little bit and it's going to go bloop. Okay. So what you do is you're put, putting it in, put the rotor, the electrode on the rotor, point that towards cylinder number three. Okay. And as you drop that distributor in, it meshes with that gear. Bam. It'll bring it pointing directly towards number two cylinder. So make sure you're top dead center on your harmonic balancer. Make sure your electrode's pointing to the front corner passenger side of the intake manifold. Once that's set, label on your distributor cap number one. When you set your distributor cap on your distributor, that electrode on the rotor should be pointing to number one on the distributor cap. Okay, now if you notice the electrode on the rotor, that electrode that's pointing at right in the front passenger side corner of the intake manifold or pointing at number two cylinder. That's where you want it. And when you go to put on your distributor cap, you just line that little square with the square notch in the distributor itself and then you can move this around to where number one will line up right with that electrode. Okay, so for example, now I can move this around. And here's my number one. I'll just lift the cap off. And I'm right there. All right, now that the distributor is set, you can go ahead, lock it down with your distributor hold down clamp. Then go ahead and secure your distributor cap. Then go ahead and plug in your wires, like for myself, I have to go from a 6AL, MSD 6AL box to the distributor, just a little plug, plug that in. Once you're done with that, 
I would suggest go ahead and run your wires and once that's done then you can go ahead and in my case set my blower on top. One thing I wanted to show you is I bought some Taylor Thunderbolt 50 uh, spark plug wires and they make a couple different sets. These particular ones are under the header set. You can get over the header or under the header. I'm going under the header. And that's what these are for. They're just a little longer. And the cool thing about these, they're already numbered. Each spark plug wire is numbered. One thing to note, they include silicone. Use it. Take a cotton swab, dip some in there, and just smear a little in the boot on each end. All right. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Just want to share that little cool thing with you about Taylor wires. So now I can go ahead and put my blower on top of my intake manifold. Now that all my spark plug wires are ran, put the blower base gasket on, something my blower on, and I torque those nuts on the blower to about 12 foot pounds of torque. There is a torque sequence. So follow that. And then I go ahead and set my carburetors on, and those get torqued to seven foot pounds of torque. Here's a little side note. If you're going to paint aluminum, you need some self-etching primer. My half-inch spacers wouldn't work. I need a one-inch spacers to clear the throttle linkage. So I bought these from Summit for 16 bucks. And I bought some self-etching primer. And this just pretty much etches the aluminum, gives the paint something to adhere to. You can just go ahead and try to paint the aluminum probably in about one to two months. Your paint will start flaking off. So I'm going to take some 400 grit sandpaper. I'm going to rough this up a little bit. I'm going to take some lacquer thinner, or you can use a wax and grease remover. Wipe it all down. And then I'm going to run it under some uh, hot water with soap, soap and water, wash it off, dry it off with a lint-free rag. And go ahead and use my self-etching primer. Three coats every 10 minutes, put a coat on. And then uh, two hours, she's completely dry, and I'm going to paint it, and it's going to look killer. So on Teflon tape, when you're putting Teflon tape on a pipe fitting, this is going into the fuel regulator. First, make sure you leave a couple threads exposed. You don't want to put Teflon tape all the way to the end because little pieces could break off and get into your fuel system. Second thing, when you put your Teflon tape on, make sure it's going the right way. Yeah, it can go this way or this way, but when you go to screw it in, you don't want the tail end unwinding itself. So kind of think of, okay, when I screw it in, which way does my Teflon tape have to face so it doesn't unwind itself? All right, that's about it. All right, now I'm going to install my homemade uh, pork limiter bar. Actually, it's not homemade, it kind of is. I bought it as a kit and then you just modify it to uh, make it so uh, it works for you. One thing I want to mention, if you're running motor plates, you should really have one of these. Otherwise, when your motor, you're on the gas, you're off the gas, literally your, your motor plates, 
your, your motor plates are kind of flexing, okay? So you need a, something to keep the motor solid to the frame. This is this chassis engineering weld up kit. So I had to put just a slight bend in it to uh, clear my steering knuckle. Anyway, one other thing I wanted to mention, these are really good bolts. These are called Bull Mally bolts. Check it out. There's the name in case I'm saying it wrong. Bull Mally. They're stronger than a grade eight bolt and yet you can bend it in a U and it won't break. A grade eight is really strong, but it's pretty easy to shear right off. So this is how the head of the bolt looks. Okay. And I get these at, uh, it's called Bailings Racing Products. They're a circle track supply house in Butler, Wisconsin. You can look them up on the internet. They got a catalog about that thick and they got everything you need to build a hot rod. So anyway, just want to mention that uh, if you're going to be building a hot rod or something, especially if you're putting a torque limiter bar on, get these type of bolts, man. Lifesavers, okay? If you want to get rid of your cable linkage and go with a solid rod off your carburetor directly to your gas pedal. What I noticed on my gas pedal, the way it was hooked up, I just have a row bar running across underneath the dashboard and I welded on some brackets and mounted my gas pedal to that. It's a hanging gas pedal. So the gas pedal is here, the rod from the carburetor comes to the top. Now my pivot point is about three inches down. And the problem with that is, is that it takes nine inches for the gas pedal to travel to move the linkage two inches. So what you can do I'm going to install my header. I bought some Brembo flat gaskets. They're real thick. They're a graphite type material. Pretty much guaranteed never to blow or leak. This is just my homemade header that I made. Nothing really too fancy. But uh, yeah, that's about it here. That's how she works. Thing. These gaskets, the Remflex gaskets, do torque to 24 pound torque and they're good up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. And look at that, guaranteed, 100% guaranteed. If you're gonna have, send it back.